welcome you again in the classes of the cvs academy today we are starting the chapter 4 unit 4 in your syllabus and here we will discuss the ground water the soil and the rocks and minerals these all three we will complete in this particular unit remaining things of this particular unit we have already covered like wind wind types their flow the numericals of that all we have already covered in unit 1 that all hydrosphere lithosphere atmosphere we are directly jumping into remaining portion of this unit ground water soil and the rocks and minerals so one by one we will complete that all in this particular section so here what is the ground water so here you can see this is the rainfall coming out from the clouds and when this rainfall coming in the heavy amount on the surface of the soil so here few amount of that water percolate into deep soil layer and go downside in the surface layer of the soil here you can see and this will create the soil moisture as well which is very necessary for the plant and all the things which are sustaining in our soil surface so here we have then a water table and be below that water table all the water get stored which is coming from the percolation of the water from the soil surface and this particular level would be called as the water level and before of that there is a unsaturated zone which is also called as meadows zone and this is the saturated zone which is fully filled with the water so this is our ground water so ground water is the water present beneath the earth surface in rock and soil pore spaces and in the fractures of the rock formations as well about 30% of all readily available fresh water in the world is ground water so already we have very few amount of the fresh water available in the earth surface less than the 3% majority of that is already in the ice caps 2% and then remaining of that or out of that 3% almost 30% is readily available in the form of ground water only so ground water you can see the most important source of the fresh water in the earth surface especially for the human beings then if you look at the ground water ground water is divided in multiple types so here you can see the four types of the ground water very first type is called as the cornet water or fossil water so this is the water which is you can find out in the sedimentary rock pores and because fossil fossil is all also you can find out in the pores of the sedimentary rocks sedimentary rock is a type of rock out of all type of rocks three types of rocks we will see in the rock and mineral chapter and out of that one of the rock is sedimentary rock and inside the sedimentary rock the fossils are formed and in the same fossil pores or in the same pores of the sedimentary rock if any water is present that water can be termed as cornet or fossil water the second type of water is the juvenile or which is also called as the new water so this is found in the volcanic region because the volcanic rock is new type of rock so in this zone or in this rocks of pores or the rocks uh, the volcanic rocks you can find out some kind of water that would be termed as the juvenile water or the new water then we have the meteoric or rain water which is collected with the help help of the rainfall only so that type of water can be termed as the meteoric or rain water and then the fourth type we have is the rejuvenated water so rejuvenated waters found in the sediment pores not in the sedimentary rock pores this is in the sediment rock sediment pores now what is the sediment pores sedimentary rock is formed with the help of multiple layers of the sediments so these sediments composite with the time period or with the time pores and then after the time pores this sedimentary pores attach to each other and when they attach to each other and make a solid rock this type of rock can be termed as the sedimentary rock and inside the sedimentary rock if pores are present and water you can find out that would be the cornet water or fossil water that we have already seen but suppose this is not established yet and only we have the different layers of the sediments and it is not converted into rock state and still you can find out some amount of water here in the pores present here so that can be termed as the rejuvenated water which you can find out in the sediment pores so here in the sedimentary rock and sediment pores both are the different if water is present in the sediment pores that can be termed as the rejuvenated water if you can find out in the sedimentary rock then this would be the cornet or fossil water so these all four are the types of the ground water that you can find out below the soil surface so i hope this is clear to you all the four types of ground water 
then based on the porosity and permeability of the water porosity means how many amount of pore you can find out that would be your porosity so the higher number of pores you can find out higher would be the porosity permeability is the is provided by the soil surface to permeate the water or to pass the water through it higher would be the ease of passing the water more easily the water can pass through these different soil layers so we would term it it is having higher permeability if only less amount of water can pass through this so we will tell that this type of soil or this type of rock is maybe less permeable and if it is not providing any permeability especially you can find out in the case of the clay soil where permeability is almost none so here we will term that as impermeable layer so through which the water cannot pass at all so that would be the impermeable layer so this is what porosity and permeability is so according to this porosity and permeability again ground water is termed in multiple types the very first type here you can see is aquifer so aquifer aquifer is what which can hold as well as transmit the water at normal hydraulic condition for example the gravels and sandstones are the types of aquifer which provide the aquifer generation so here the holding capacity of the water is good as well as it will allow or transmit the water easily as well so permeable as well so these can be termed as the aquifer type of ground water then we have another medium here which is called as the aquifluid what is the aquifluid aquifluid which can hold the water but cannot transmit the water easily i have told you the example of clay particles clay particles are almost create a kind of impermeable layer that cannot be passed with the help of water or which cannot be passed by the water but the holding water holding capacity of these particles is very high because of the very high amount of porosity you can find out in the clay particles so that's why this can hold the water with a very good amount but cannot transmit the water easily so this is the example of medium of aquifluid then we have the aquitard aquitard which can hold the water and transmit the water but permeability is not very sufficient so what is the that kind of layer that kind of layer is the mixture of the sand particles sand particles are the larger particles and in between these sand particles the clay particles are attached so here because of the presence of the sand particles the water is allowed to permeate through this particular layer but here you can see that the transmission would be not very easily not sufficient because of the presence of these clay particles then there is another problem of the water holding capacity water holding capacity of the clay is very good as compared to the sand particles but the sand particles provide very good amount of permeability but the clay particles doesn't provide the good amount of permeability so both permeability is present here as well as this porosity is present here water holding capacity is present here but both are not in good amount or not in sufficient amount so this type of the medium is termed as the aquitard type of medium then we have the aquifuse aquifuse are the uh, mediums or the layers to which the water cannot be hold as well as it cannot be transmitted so it is not allowing the holding of the water as well as the transmitters of the water example here is the granite or igneous rocks these are the rocks which are impermeable and they don't hold any water as well so in these rocks are termed as the aquifuse type of medium of the layers or the rocks you can say through which the water cannot hold as well as not cannot be transmitted so this is the aquifuse type of the layer so i hope all the four types of layers are clear to you or types are clear to you aquifer which can hold the water and transmit the water at normal speed aquifluid which can hold but cannot the transmit the water aquitard both is available holding is available as well as the uh, permeability is available but not in very sufficient amount and aquifuse uh, not the transmittance is available as well as nor the holding capacity is available here so this is what all the four types of medium according to the porosity and permeability